recently, I went to John Davis Recording Studio in the Forest of Dean. Here, I met the three members of the band Small Dogs Bite. I get angry, cause my life's in a mess. I get angry, cause I'm not a success. And if you were to ask me, I'd have to confess that I'm angry, very angry. I get angry, cause my car is on fire. I get angry, cause I'm walking a wire between sanity and madness. And I can't get no higher. I get angry, very angry. <laughs> So here this evening in this absolute wonderful studio with Small Dogs Bite. And uh, just so everybody knows everybody's name, can you all introduce yourself to the microphone, please? I'll start with, with yourself. Hi, I'm Mike. Mike Edwards. Uh, Tim, Buckmaster. And... Gurry, hello. Gary, hello. Gary, hello. Gary, hello. So let's come up with the name. I absolutely love the name. And I know I know the reason. I'll just absolutely love for yourself to say, Mike, maybe we should get a word from Tim because he was the one who got the, the brunt of what happened for the name of the band. Well, indeed. And Tim actually came up with the name. So I think it's only fair that okay, he tells the story. To yeah, I only come up with the name because every time I went around to see him, these bloody dogs used to bite me and they'd be hanging off the bottom of my leg, you know. <laughs> So anyway, thinking all these posh names for a band, and I thought, yeah, small dogs bite, <laughs> which is what they do. Absolutely. And I've even tried bribing. I've turned up with food. Yeah, not impressed. Neither of them are impressed. Nothing I can do. So every time I go around, they have a go, and they tug away at my leg. Not Gary, not John, not anybody else. It's just me, isn't it? Just yeah. something about you. There is. Yeah, I think it's my striped jumper, actually. So yeah. how many trousers have you left, lost then during this? Well, I've lost count, actually. I've got my solicitor on it now, and he's actually suing Mike and Shirley, but I haven't told them because, you know, we might fall out. But, uh, well, I did, actually. I got a my... letter the other day. I got a letter the other day. He said he'd sue the pants off us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, God, that's a ripping joke, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what to do about it, really. Um... I'm thinking of buying this huge bull mastiff to you know, shoot between my legs and eat them. And that would solve the mystery, wouldn't it? But then we wouldn't be called Small Dogs Bite anymore, would we? We'd have to be called Big Dog Eat Small Dog or <laughs> something like that. You know, a ring so, to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So there we go anyway, you know. Well, maybe that could be the next album, what you call that. Yeah, what Huge Dog Eat Small Dog. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, is it, really? Yeah, well, we've already got an up-and-coming number called Doom. So... That could fit in quite well, couldn't it, actually? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so let's talk about some musical influences then, because I've heard it. And, and to me, I kind of sort of... Uh, Dr Feelgood comes to mind when I hear some of your music. I don't know if you're kind of shaking your head No, not at all. But I kind of feel that when I, <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've listened to some of the, the tunes. The I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, what are your musical influences? Um, musical influences? How long have you got? I like Frank Zappa, King Crimson. Um... R&B. Me. I love chic <laughs> funk music. <laughs> and uh, anything to do with that, it's uh, floats me boat. Um, Dr. Feelgood, the Buzzcocks, uh, a lot of the punk stuff. I even like the Carpenters from way back when. Oh so, God. An eclectic selection. I was going to say, nobody's perfect, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had my cross to bear. <laughs> I thought he had problems, but, you know, to wear <laughs> them in public. <laughs> So, tell me how you first got together, because I know it's something that's been more recent. You all come from different musical backgrounds as well, so if you can say how the band formed. Uh, yeah, well, it sort of formed on, on, on the back of an idea, really. I, I happened to be at a, um, a festival a couple of years back called uh, Woody Stock at the Woodman in Park End in the Forest of Dean. And um, I was playing in another band at the time, a covers band. And uh, and then after us, this other band got up, and um, we, we, we uh, Shirley, Shirley, my wife, and I saw these guys get up, and uh, all of a sudden, when they started playing, I said to Shirley, "Wow, that gu- that guy's guitar style would go really well on my recording project." I was thinking of recording Thank some you. songs. Um, and anyway, then Tim got up after that. Oh, oh, sorry, no, no, it was Tim. That's right. Um, and so I actually mentioned it, I think, on that day to Tim, and then the idea sort of lay dormant for a well best part of a couple of years really till last year when tim and i found ourselves playing um some semi-acoustic uh, stuff in street festivals and the like and then we got to talking about uh, tackling some original music um and tim started adding 
some very different interpretations to some of the uh, lyrics on my songs. And then it followed on from there also, where we said, right, now we need a, um, you know, uh, a decent drummer to uh, to set this thing up properly. Uh-oh. And it's still a, a problem, l- isn't it, really? Well, <laughs> <laughs> downhill ever since. We've, uh, we've rehearsed that punchline now, haven't we? It works well, doesn't it? But uh, along came Gary and, yeah, um, and added... Um, a name for a band. Kicking along, and screaming. <laughs> kipping and screaming. Kicking. Yeah. Kipping, kipping and screaming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So uh, again, sort of added added to the uh, added to the sound in spades. Really, it's amazing. Mm. Yeah. So I know some of the pieces were originally folk pieces <laughs> of music. So uh, how much did they actually change from the original? A little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, for a couple of years before I did this, I'd been working on my own songs and playing in um, folk clubs. Uh, some of them in Manchester area because I was working there at the time. So I couldn't really run a band. I was migrating between Manchester and the Forest of Dean every week. Um, there was no time to settle in with any other musicians. So I used to go out to open mics and I was sort of playing these songs. Um, but when I pl- was playing them to Tim, um, Tim, Tim was sort of inventing these brand new chords and and I just it made me reevaluate all of the uh, the songs I'd been singing and uh, they just came out completely differently, which is great. I have no problem with that at all. In fact, it's um, I, th- I think they're all the better for it. Yeah. So I know even in the studio itself, some of the lyrics had changed. Can you just say some of those changes to us, please? <laughs> Who wants to answer this particular question? <laughs> well, we do a song called There's an Elephant in the Room. <clears throat> and really the trick is to, there's an elephant in the room, um, not a gunfight at high noon. So you pick the a rhyming verse to go with it. So John actually contributed one. Uh, I think his was, uh, uh, what Re- is it, John? There's, the there's a relative with a broom. Mm-hmm. You know, a bit of a giveaway. I think he must have problems with his relatives, you know. But uh, so we, we've got a sense of humour, you know. It's kind of a bit Monty Pythonish, really. Very important. So, yeah, yeah, yeah we don't take ourselves too seriously. No. And uh, so elephant, yeah, there's an elephant in the room. And you think of your own rhyme, you know. It's not a person in the gloom. It's mm. not a bridezilla with a groom. Yeah. Or a harbinger of doom. <laughs> or a harbinger of doom. <laughs> <laughs> so, although we haven't played it live, when we play it live, we'll probably be making up <laughs> silly rhymes, you know, ad-libbing. to go with, uh, yeah, ad lib stuff where there's an elephant in the room. And of course, it bloody sticks with you, doesn't it? You know, I go around the house, you know, doing my daily chores. <laughs> Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, and uh, it sticks in my mind. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, what rhymes with there's an elephant in the room, you know? So, but uh, Mike is the wordsmith, you know, he comes up with um, all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Angry, you know, I'm angry because I have uh, the government's taken away something I never had, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, and there's a dreadful line about trousers. What's that one? Oh, uh, that's on Small Dog's on Bite. Small Dog's Bite. That's, uh, Small Dog's Bite, the title track, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, which, yeah, um, we'll clamp those sharp incisors till you're bound to lose your trousers. <laughs> um, which is sort of a, well, we're back on the on the opening line, really. Uh, the, the fate of Tim's trousers, effectively. Yeah, we're yeah. not going to get away from that, are we? Really? No, no, uh, no. We need to sell albums to buy myself a new pair of trousers. I think, yeah, really. yeah. <laughs> Support Tim's Trouser Fund. Yeah, I think that could be our campaign, really. Yeah. Could be what the whole band's based on, couldn't it, really? Yeah, you crowd know. trousering. Trou- crowd trousering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Into but, it, yeah. but no, Mike, write, Mike writes really interesting lyrics uh, that are slightly off the wall, but they, if you look further into them, they do have a deeper meaning. You know, they, they really do. And I like angry because it kind of deals with angst, you know, that things, as you get older, things were never as you thought they might be, you know. And it's, perspe- it's a unique perspective that only comes with being old. You know, and we can't get away from being old, but we have that power now to look back and say, oh, well, life didn't turn out the way. And we have an amusing slant on why it didn't turn out, you know, uh, (laughs) mostly blaming the government, I might add, um, and small dogs, you know. (laughs) (laughs) So my favourite track of the the tunes that I've heard is actually Angry. But what was it what made you decide to choose that one to make your music video? And then after you've answered that question, what's going to be happening? Because I know you want to come across quite quirky. Uh, yeah, well, I like Angry. Um, it's a nice, catchy two-chord riff and a nice bass line that goes with it. Um, I'm, I'm Angry is quite catchy, I think, you know, but it stays yeah, with you. A lot of people you. can relate to it, can't they? Being yeah, angry. And, and a lot of people relate to being angry but being powerless. You know, I'm angry. And so we don't come over angry as smashing things up. We come over as angry 
<laughs> this is like a despair, isn't it, really? <laughs> Part time angry. But yeah. We've taken yeah. I'm angry because yeah. I'm hungry is a good yeah. line. Isn't we, it? We've taken over where Victor Meldrew uh, <laughs> left off, basically, I think you could say, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, so. But, it, but it's quirky enough. So we, we'd, we'd done a video, but it's not going to be a straight pop video because we wanted a story in it. So it's going to feature Mike starting as a schoolboy. And uh, this is Gary Etta here. Yeah, so we dressed this, this is uh, Mike's mum. And uh, I'm going to be in Mike's, full gear. I'm going to be Mike's dad. And we're so interspersed with us playing the song, we are going to um, feature as, uh, you know, small-time actors. And Mike's going to get older and older. Time. And uh, as he gets older, then we get older. And I believe um, it's got to be done. We all end up in the galactic toilet. Uh, we get flushed away. And we get flushed away into nothing, you know. But we start in the galaxy. I can't give too much away. You couldn't make this up, could you? But um, that's kind of the premise. We also get to play on the moon, which is quite interesting. Uh, so there's a touch of, you know, there's a nod to, I don't know, ACDC, Queen, Police. There's lots of nods to, you know, in general uh, other, other acts. Um, I don't believe any small dogs are appearing on it, mind you, so... We have cars that blow up. We are featuring small dogs by Tibix, patent applied for cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's lots of little detail in there, and uh, that should be quite fun it's to nice do. It's a nice little storyboard. Yeah. So, so you yeah. know. Something it, different, something quirky, something to put on the internet and uh, let people see what the band are about. So, so we're actually in the studio where the album was recorded. Mm. Um, can you say a little bit about the recording process, please? Yeah, well, we spent two days with John and uh, rehearsed and then recorded the songs, um, mostly in one take. Went back in and did the vocals and a little bit of uh, minor adjustment and very pleased with the outcome. Mm. So, um, yeah. yeah, we're kind well, of old school. <clears throat> we actually rehearse and rehearse and rehearse because years ago when you recorded, studios cost an absolute arm and a leg and they were all on tape machines that... You know, to, to wind, to go back and do it again, you had to wind it back. It took hours. But John's high-tech studio, he just presses a button, you're back at the beginning again, you know. But we still do that. We rehearse it and rehearse it. And we kind of done it in one take, um, yeah. which is, yeah, good, I suppose. Yeah. And it's probably worth mentioning at the moment, you, you may have heard this John word cropping up a few times, the mysterious John. He's actually lurking in the background at the moment, but he is um, a producer and uh, recordist of, um, of great skill. And, uh, and vast experience. I think yeah. I think he ought to make a cameo yeah. appearance. Yeah. Come come and take a seat, John. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I I, th I think you ought to ask John a few questions about Absolutely. his illustrious history rather than me. Me. John David, musician, was involved with a lot of famous bands in the 70s, and perhaps his work with Dave Edmonds and the number one hit "I Hear You Knocking." is the most well known. So first of all, I, I mean, I'm really impressed with these wonderful gold platinum albums. Can you say a little bit about those to the camera, please? Uh, well, they're just, they're just sort of trophies, isn't they? <laughs> 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 I've, lost, I've lost some of them, but it's quite nice to see them like that. Yeah, yeah they're just song, uh, gold records or platinum records that I've written or produced, or both. Um, and they rather look nice on the wall, so. That's where they'll stay. You like to tell us a little bit about your musical journey from the music you've done to getting through this wonderful studio now? Uh, it started off with a drummer in my um, dad's dance band uh, playing strict tempo uh, ballroom music. Then realised there was a, a world of rock and roll out there and blagged my way into a, a rock and roll band by pretending to be a bass player. And um, we had a uh, number two hit not long after that, and I was voted ninth best bass player in the country, even though I'd only been playing nine months. So um, that I, you know, I realised then people didn't know anything, So, uh, especially the music magazines. Uh, yeah, and then had a, another big hit with Dave Edmonds, um, I Hear You Knocking, and various other things. and Did a lot of writing and had lots of hits with Status Quo and, you know, all the mainstream people clip Richard and all that and uh, yeah just got lucky generally <laughs> and that's that's how I ended up here <laughs> so I, I know there's lots of people uh, and particularly sort of teenagers wanting to go into 
sound recording as a as a career uh what would advice would you give to people that are thinking about starting because a lot of people still say you're going to go to university and do this and other people i speak to say just go out and just learn it yourself by just doing it what would, what would you recommend no it's what i would say it, i don't think it matters what you learn or what teachers you have um if you don't get the motivation if you want to do it just do it and i didn't know arse from all in the ground but you know i just um <laughs> i just wanted to do it you know mm. so you can you find a way to do it in the end yeah. it's just perseverance um and the more you persevere the luckier you get and hopefully you get really lucky like i did um but mostly it's perseverance so tell us what was it like working with these guys small dogs bite oh, breath of fresh air yeah yeah, <laughs> after we got rid of the dogs, that was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we insisted on having the windows open, that's why it's breath fresh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the only way I could throw the dogs out. Yeah. Through the window. But, um, no, it was good. Uh, it was old, done the old school way. Um, they'd rehearsed till they were note perfect, word perfect. And they're all great players anyway, so we generally did one take um, and... Then we might have done another take and then chosen between the best ones, but they were all straight through. There was hardly any overdubs apart from the lead vocals um, and a few uh, silly harmony overdubs, backing vocals. But basically it was um, pretty much live, you know. Mm. And uh, luckily the drums sounded great, so I didn't have to do anything. Um, uh, <laughs> and nobody played any wrong notes, so I didn't have to fix anything. So. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Yeah. Uh, and actually, um, Johnny is hiding his light under a bushel here because he does actually appear on the album and he, um, he has this fantastic, sophisticated lyric, which um, I would like him to repeat now. Are you ready for this? I don't know whether I can remember it all, but it went something like, ouch! <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that was one of the dogs then at that, that point. Yeah. That. So that's the <laughs> ouch on um, <laughs> small dog's bite. Yeah. <laughs> but he had to rehearse. He had to work a bit quite hard on that we were tough you know yeah. we made sure he did it right so you've actually thought about maybe leaving the microphone round in in your place for when the dogs actually do buy us and get a real kind of yelp from something to put into the next album <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's a good idea really we yeah we tend to leave the you know the uh, the voice recorder on all the time these days just in case we catch something happening yeah <laughs> but yeah. nothing safety wouldn't allow it really no no <laughs> nothing not these days you can get away with it yeah <laughs> <laughs> So also, uh, Tim's been having this book. You, you like you like your your limericks and your poems. You want to just to share one for us because I just I just heard one and thought I'd of course well, stick this in somewhere. And well, I can see Shirley's looking quite shocked now. <laughs> well, this let's find one that's repeatable, is it? Yeah. Uh, the, the Wii one was was not too bad. That was, I, you could probably get away with PG with yeah. that one. <laughs> this is um. Shall I introduce it? Then? Yeah, let's go. This, yeah. This is a, a book in John's studio, which we thoroughly enjoyed reading. I think Mike based quite a few lyrics on this. Anyway, I will read you one. And um, it goes like this. When I was a wee-wee tot, they took me from my wee-wee cot. They put me on my wee-wee pot to see if I would wee or not. When they found I would not, they took me from my wee-wee pot. They put me in my wee-wee cot where I wee wee quite a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't repeat any more because they're actually um, fairly obscene. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can just you can just tell by well, I've seen some of the pictures in there as well, <laughs> actually. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, that, that kind of gives you an idea, you know, of, of our sense of humour. Really, you know, it's um, it's fun. It's got to be fun. Mm. And we haven't got an axe to grind anymore. We've got no angst, have we, really? And no. Nope. We, we're in a Nothing privileged position where we just can actually have fun. I mean, the mashup we do of um, a whole lot of boots, you know, Nancy Sinatra, wasn't it, sang, um, mm. these boots are made for walking. And uh, then we stuck in whole the riff from a whole lot of love. And it, it worked. And then we decided, well, we can play boots in reggae style. And then Mike decided that actually gangster reggae style, but British gangster reggae. So think Ronnie Cray. All right, lads. It, all right, lads, singing. Sweeney. You know. <laughs> and, so, and suddenly we're, we're a, a carry-on film. 
you know mm. you know what's that uh in our ain't our fuck mum yeah. you mm. know kind of humor <laughs> that comes <laughs> out you know um and i was kind of brought up on you know the goon show and peter sellers and that madness you know there's yeah. some brilliant humor mm. absolutely brilliant uh, always reminds me of how um harry seacombe met um uh, Spike Milligan. Harry Seacombe was on top in the war, on top of this bank with a gun, a huge artillery piece, and Spike Milligan was down below, and this gun fell off the bank. So they they sent Harry Seacombe down to find it, and he saw Spike Milligan. He said, "Have you seen a gun?" And Spike Milligan said, "Yeah. What colour is it?" <laughs> I mean, you know. And he said, "After that, they were friends for life." You know. I mean, who? You know, it's absolutely brilliant that absurdness. You know. Yeah. So I'm hopefully that comes out. You know. We're, you know, don't take us too seriously. So when people see you, you live, what sort of ideas are you get in for like live performances? Because you say you like quirkiness. Is there any ideas that are coming out when you're, you're actually live on stage? Well, hopefully the way it'll come out will be sort of uh, a, a bit reminiscent. I, I think probably of cross between Ian Jury and Madness, um, the way we want to project this, I think. Um, and... I, I think as as you know, as we know our music quite well, and interestingly, I think when when we start doing the lyrics and we're actually playing live, there's going to be quite a lot of improvisation with a bit of luck. Um, but it's going to come out in a you know almost a semi poetry style um, in some of these songs. Um, other ones will be straightforward, you know, get up and dance, um, a la Buzzcocks um, or Dr. Feelgood, as you say. That's another good one, by the way. I hadn't thought of Dr. Feelgood, but mm. yeah, good, a good um, yeah. comparison. Um, but yeah, we want people to have fun. We want people to enjoy this music, but appreciating it's original. Um, and we just want to put a lot of energy into it, make people go away feeling happy. Hmm. And, and a little bit thoughtful maybe leave hmm. the good feel factor folks <laughs> that's what it's all about yeah, yeah. no yeah. We, we enjoy playing live get a great buzz from it and uh, that's what we're about it's just a live band as such and uh, hopefully we can get yeah. a lot of work with it yeah, we've got plenty of energy still. We really have got plenty of energy. Oh, yeah. You know, we're not, we are getting on. <laughs> we're pensioners, but still, you know, I've still got that uh, goal. Filler San, you know. 40 the over 40s. They don't, that, they don't know what, nobody knows what Filler San is anymore. Sorry, Gary, I don't think they sell it. No. No, no. I remember it well. Do you? <laughs> you used to get it on prescription. <laughs> Quite a while ago. So, did you? At, oh, least, at least you can remember. Yeah. 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 You're doing can well. You? <laughs> yeah, that could be a problem live. Uh, I think one of the riders for the contract what well, might be a um a nurse and a defibrillator you yep. know i um, wonder where this was going when you said a nurse <laughs> <laughs> well uh, you know again uh, you know anything's possible <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know of course it, it has to be a young pretty nurse yeah. you know i wouldn't want anybody trying to revive me <laughs> 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 yeah anyway uh, we i digress anyway uh we did think of a blow up elephant and maybe some you know vicious dogs on the stage, <clears throat> stage act pops. as well yeah um, like Pink Floyd's, uh, what was it? They had a, a pig, wasn't it? They had a pig. Yeah, we were thinking elephant now. Mm. Yeah. Or and it gave everybody who comes in an elephant balloon on a stick, which I thought would be quite a nice idea, yeah. wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah. That'd be good. yeah. Yeah. But I thought we could an elephant with a dog teeth in its butt you know what i mean mm -hmm. so even the elephant is going to get grief yeah, yeah? you yeah. know what i mean so i think yeah. i think that'd be I a good you mean. <laughs> i think that'd be a good thing to have actually yeah what do you think yeah yeah i think so yeah, I, yeah. I can tell you're still hurt by the dog so you want an elephant to get uh, a I'm, I'm wounded for life <laughs> scarred forever i am I, I i just beyond belief I'm yeah. especially when you take them food yeah what sort of dog's that yeah you know, <laughs> his, his name's thomas by the way and if he's listening i think you know i hope he's feeling really repentant mm -hmm. if pooches can feel repentant <laughs> or repentant about my <laughs> trousers <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone wants to know more about you you've got a facebook page you've got a website if you want to say about how people can get in contact with you yeah that's right yeah we so we've got the website which is uh www.smalldogsbite.com and then we've got the facebook page which is small dogs bite and then what twitter. else have we got we've got we're on twitter we're on twitter small dogs bite one mm -hmm. that's a big s <clears throat> big d big b small dogs bite one yeah with an app before it of course yeah that's it. hashtag that's twitter yeah hashtag laugh yeah <laughs> you've got it. um and then we've also got a soundcloud channel but you might have to search a little bit to find that but there we are there on soundcloud and we've got a YouTube channel, which is a bit young at the moment, but this is going to make an appearance on it, this video. and we've got something um, young. Yeah, we've got something <laughs> young, yeah. 
Um, as well as, of course, all the, um, the music distribution sites. So we're available for download, and uh, you can you can get the video, you can get the CD uh, through Amazon Music if you want to. Uh, they'll send you a nice, pretty CD that you can hold on to. Uh, we're going to get a few CDs printed, but the way these days is mainly downloads and um, and, and streaming. So uh, so that we see that's where our major uh, output's going to be. Hmm. Yeah, that's the plan. So, so anybody else got anything they want to really add that I haven't asked anybody? If, um, we could, I don't know. I think we just about covered most of it. Have we? We just about covered up most of it. I would say elephants. most of it's covered. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can think nothing sensible to say. Let's put it like that. Yeah, really. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> like we, could talk... your, we could talk about your amazing instrument, couldn't we? Uh, well, yeah. yeah. Arch uh, we got some bottoms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I also forgot we, we got some some instruments in to show, so yeah. should we just do that? Okay. Yeah. We discovered we were high tech. We discovered Mike and I up, but actually play very high tech carbon fiber instruments, which is interesting. And. Uh, I've got a Parker. Parker. It's and I don't think they make them anymore. Parker. But it, but it's actually yes, my lady. It's actually, <laughs> I think it's like the Starship Enterprise. Da, 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 da. Do you see them? Yeah, you, absolutely. Can, yeah, you can see it flying. Yeah, no, I can see it flying through space. Yeah, then. scrape your off, Tim. Uh, <laughs> this is my second Parker, and it's actually carbon fiber. The frets are actually stuck on. They're not traditionally oh, cut okay. in a groove. They're actually stuck on, and it's a shell carbon fiber shell with a wood insert and it is absolutely amazing and this is the second one i've had in yeah. fact gary had the first one uh, which i bought in 95 i used it to play tennis with it's got a great <laughs> rebound i had to get it restrung but it was good what was it like at the backhand when you played tennis with it <laughs> well i have to work on my backhand but um i'm sure it will improve <laughs> over the nets but uh yes yeah, nice guitar yeah, yeah. It's a nice guitar. Uh, amazing piece of kit, really. The fretboard is to die for, 24 frets, double octave, uh, compound radius. It's got all sorts of little things that compensate for the, the sound of tune. It's got a tremolo arm that doesn't go out of tune. Uh, it's better than me, really. You know, <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, yeah, and the guy, pretty much handmade to start with. And uh, yeah, I think they've been discontinued, um, which is a shame. But Mike's guitar is very similar. I think, with a graphite neck, isn't it? Yeah. Sort of carbon fibre neck. Yeah. So this here, this is this is a status bass. Um, so for anyone who knows uh, Level 42 and Mark King, he plays a status bass, but it's, um, he bought his new, whereas I found mine in a music shop. Um, so this has got a graphite neck, and if the light's right, we may see that beautiful, pretty pattern on the back there. Um, yep, yeah. okay. And of course, the other distinct thing about it, which is I often get comments about when we play, is, uh, Oi, mate, the top of your guitar's broken off. Um, well, the, these things were quite popular in the, in the 1980s, headless basses, and there were some headless guitars as well. Um, they're good for um, a number of reasons. Your, your typical sort of Fender bass is a beautiful instrument, but they're very heavy. Um, when you're playing gigs uh, long into the night, they can, uh, they can really do you back in uh, when you're a little squirt like me. So this thing's quite light. Um, it also keeps in tune very well because of, uh, I guess, because it's got that graphite neck which is solid, it doesn't bend or anything. Same yeah, and it's also got what they call double ball end strings. So the strings seated in the top here, and it's got another ball down at that end to hold it in place. So they hold their tune very well, exactly. and you tune them with these things down here. <laughs> yeah, come on, status, sponsor me. I want the five string now. Um, and this one is about, I think, probably about a 1991 model. Um, and it's got some special electrics in it that it had when I bought it from the shop. I've never had to have anything done to it. It's just, it's just my all-time favourite bass. Love it. <laughs> anybody, anything else at all? Anybody? Did you come in with your drums? I couldn't uh, bring any drums then. But... Um... Show him your I, I do have a you few. Could, you, can you show us your sticks for the camera? My sticks. Uh, I haven't bought any sticks. <laughs> All I bought is me. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> no, I like to collect drums and a few things. The same as these guys like to collect on, uh, guitars. Oh, best, how many? The best part of a few. But, uh, yeah, the old uh, Gretsch stuff and the Ludwig stuff. Biggest collection in the Midlands, and, I would have uh, thought. Oh, I don't know. Uh, 14 plus? It's been a lifelong pursuit, and uh, I've collected them as I go along. And I get uh, a lot of satisfaction. 
from the collection. Uh, me mother would come to do cleaning in my house and can't understand why there's so many drums crammed <laughs> in every room. Uh, why do you need all these drums? Well, some people collect porcelain, vintage motorcycles, beer mats. I say, hey, I collect drums. <laughs> Which, uh, shut her up, but <laughs> good old man. <laughs> and that's about it, so. We just yeah. had a nice drum skin made, haven't you? Yeah, we had a, a front head for the drum, the bass drum. Depicting the name of the band, obviously uh, Small Dog's Bite, with uh, their logo, and it's very effective. It looks really mm. good. So um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to taking it out and uh, playing it. So fantastic! Watch your space, folks. <laughs> Did you hear that, agent? He's looking forward to taking it out and playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's actually just a status symbol, isn't it? <laughs> Sim symbol. <Yeah. laughs> you see what I did there. <laughs> Yeah. I got it. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Very kind. <laughs> All right. So, mm, yeah, happy. I don't know what else yeah. anybody can say, really. Mm. Um, there's probably not plenty of gibberish. <laughs> so, yeah. I like the gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> I had such a good laugh meeting these guys, and I enjoyed the interview immensely. Send